Let's get some in-depth analysis of what exactly is driving banking shares in the Nairobi Securities Exchange. I'm now joined by Samuel Gishohi. He's the Business Development Director at NIC Securities. Thank you for your time. You're welcome. Good to have you here as always. Um, let's start with a broad picture here. I know you have a, a hold rating on Barclays and KCB, but you have a buy rating on KCB and Corp Bank. Walk us through the analysis of those respective counters. Right. Um, Barclays, for one, uh, when you look at uh, Barclays books, their, their, their price-to-book ratio, mm. it's got a very rich rating. Barclays has about um, a price-to-book ratio, ratio about approximately three times. Yeah. And that means their capitalization is very good. Um, their loan book has grown very well, so their volumes to margins are looking pretty good as well. Mm. Because we did see, in fact, surprisingly, uh, Barclays... Uh, loan loan book grew by 20 yeah. percent compared to KCBs, which grew by around 14 percent. And usually, it's the other way around. Usually, because Barclays has a fairly around. conservative lending policy. True, and that was also a surprise. Now, um, based on that, and looking at the fact that Barclays has been trading in a very thin margin of between 18 and 19 shillings, mm -hmm. uh, you know, being seen very defensive yeah. means that we are looking at the possibility of growth going forward. And that's the reason why we think that you know anyone who's having the stock should hold, mm -hmm. and probably we could see that going up. Mm -hmm. Now, KCB, on the other hand, um, we have a bank which is uh, really one. Of course, their their ratios are looking good. There, there's a lot of uh, innovation in there, so that's also good, looking good for them. If you look at their non-funded income double digit so basically most of the growth uh, growth uh, parameters are looking double digit and uh, that is also good for back for for, for KCB yeah. and uh, so again we we had a buy rating for that we had a our, uh, we had actually put our target at around 61 shillings and then we have actually up to that to 63 and changed the buy into a hold because we're looking at the price and seeing it around 57 then you'd rather be holding it and waiting for it to, for a bit of appreciation sort of go, to, to come yes, into play yes um, uh, let's move on to equity however um the jump in its shares because it's up about 40 47 48 percent year yes. to date and the real jump came through when it announced that it had gotten a mobile virtual, uh, mobile virtual network operator license. Now, this is something that deals essentially with mobile money. It's not necessarily an area in which it has core competencies. What are the hurdles in execution you foresee there? Well, we've already seen the first hurdles. I mean, we've seen the challenge mm -hmm. uh, from, Safaricom. from Safaricom saying that, you know, there's some security issues regarding the ultra-thin um, SIM cards, SIM cards mm -hmm. which is one of the hurdles. The second one, we have seen Safaricom come out and say, okay, well, they're saying we're not worried about you know the MVNO, mm -hmm. but at the same time coming out and saying, we've looked at our, our, our portfolio and seen that 69% uh, of transactions are 1,500 shillings and below, yeah. and therefore, We're based on that, they've adjusted pricing down mm -hmm. to a level that is competitive. Mm -hmm. Now, when I look at what equity is doing, and considering the fact that they have to incur the startup costs, they have to get the buy-in from you know the their the investors uh, or their their the people who they expect to use the system, and now the the competitor. Who, Safaricom being seen as the major competitor has brought the price to a level in which uh, yesterday I was discussing with someone and said looks like a poison pill mm -hmm. saying look you have to deal with the costs we don't have to deal with the costs mm -hmm. they're bringing their platform from Germany to Kenya which makes it much cheaper for them to run and right. so essentially this their is margins the, this is a quite race good. to the bottom when it comes to margins and costs yes that's and, the bottom and line and if that happens then it will be a hurdle for equity whereas for Safaricom with their price, prices coming down, you know, with their platform being brought locally and all that, it's, and Plus they've of already course. paid most of the startup costs yeah. by now, mm -hmm. makes it much easier for them to just sit there and watch the, 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 the equity struggle to get the, the, the product on board. Uh, still on equity, about two thirds of its loan portfolio is essentially just short term lending. Um, given the fact that now we're essentially operating under the Kenya Bank reference rate, doesn't that pose a bit of a threat to their future profitability and earnings? Well, I'm not particularly worried about that mm -hmm. because my thinking is that uh, if you look at equity, um, where they're coming from is 
they, come, they came from a situation where they were lending to what we'd probably call subprime, which is, you know, the lower t end of the, you know, the micro and the individual loans, which would have tended to be short term. Yeah. But over time, this is changing mm -hmm. because most of the micro, micro borrowers are becoming SME. And that SME space is growing a lot. And in the process, even the term of the loans and the safety, you know, the sort of, because what happens is if you're lending to the micro and the, and the you know, the it's individuals, the then there's yeah. more risk mm -hmm. of default. Whereas as you go into the, the SME, then you have less default risk and therefore it sort of gives them a- And higher margins. And higher margins. Mm -hmm. And so it makes them, uh, sit better or prettier because at the end of the day the micro are ready to borrow at higher higher rates anyway mm -hmm. because not many people will probably give them these loans yeah. but as they go into the, the so essentially the loan book is growing it's it is growing and maturing and that I think is good for them all right unfortunately yes. we'll have to look at there, but fascinating discussion all the same thank you very much for your time thank you for uh, having me we've been talking to Samuel Gishoy who's a business development director at NIC Securities here with me in studio now um